A fuel cell as the main power for a car sounds a bit like science fiction to the most of us, but Hyundai already has more than 500 cars inside of Europe on the roads today and the numbers are still increasing. They deliver their hydrogen cars into 15 countries only in Europe. Now they're presenting the next generation. This car is called Nexo. It's a hydrogen car. It will be at the market soon and what it makes so special and what it offers, let's find out now. This is the next generation of hydrogen cars and that will come to the market 2018, so this year. But that car offers a range, they say more than 500 kilometers, but I'm not quite sure regarding to how many fuel stations and all this stuff. So I'm together here with Frank Meyer. He's the head of mobility and eco cars at Hyundai Europe. Um, Frank, just a question. Is this a car for day-to-day -day driving? Definitely. With the expansion of the German network of hydrogen stations, it will be very easy to use because you uh, don't longer need a lot of range, but you have sufficient amount of uh, fuel stations that will uh, help you to, in a couple of minutes, about five to six minutes, to refuel to the, current, to the maximum charge uh, of, uh, of such a car. And uh, when we talk about that car and Hyundai's, um, let's say, step forward into that kind of technology, what does Hyundai plan to make it happen that we will find more of those cars on the roads? Yeah. So first of all, we are very proud that we have uh, we, we have big ambitions when it comes to uh, eco cars in general. We launched uh, two years ago the Hyundai Ionic with three different powertrains, plug-in hybrid, hybrid electric. Uh, this year we are also launching next to this uh, Nexo uh, Arcona EV, giving a very wide array of uh, uh, vehicles that will fulfill the requirements for each different country or segment in the, in the market. Um, so we'll keep on doing like we did also the last couple of years, working with mobility providers, working with uh, markets to see what is possible to deploy vehicles. And when we're talking about, um, we want to see more of them, are there any ideas about, let's say, fleets or some people who really have a special need for it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we did in the last couple of years, besides our own project in Amsterdam with our Hyundai Ionic car sharing, uh, we worked together with two of the biggest hydrogen uh, producers in, uh, in Europe. One is Air Liquide in Paris, where we uh, help them with supplying 75 uh, fuels and vehicles as taxi service. Uh, which is quite unique because a lot of people who get into, the, into those uh, taxis have the availability to, uh, yeah, to see how it really, uh, really works. And another one is here in Germany with uh, the gas company Linde. We uh, started in 2016, or they started in 2016, uh, a car sharing project, program in, in Munich. And also there is uh, the possibility for a lot of people who live in Munich to uh, yeah, experience firsthand how a hydrogen car drives. So as we see, this is future technology, maybe not for tomorrow, but maybe the day after tomorrow. And I'm very interested to see how many of those cars we will see in the near future on German roads. The design of the Nexo is, as I think, really fresh and very modern. And this is something Hyundai did on purpose. But why they did it and what they did, the expert will tell us now. Today I'll be showing you the new Hyundai Nexo. This is what we call our future utility vehicle. And when we say future, we don't just mean future technology in the powertrain, because this is our hydrogen vehicle. We also mean future in terms of styling. So as you can see, we have full LED daytime running lights, and it has the full LED running all the way across the bonnet here. We also have the cascading grille, which is implemented into the car, much like the rest of the Hyundai lineup. And then to show more technology and how we've really improved this car in terms of aerodynamics. So air comes through the bumper, passes over the wheel, which is especially designed for the, allowing the least amount of air possible to pass through the wheel. Only the minimum amount comes through to cool the brakes and the rest passes over the wheel and over the rest of the vehicle. One of the other things that have been developed for aerodynamic efficiency is 
the auto retracting door handles. These can be set so that um, only the driver's side opens or all four doors open at once. Also along the side, they've implemented this D-pillar spoiler here where air usually builds up. This spoiler helps break up the airflow so that the maximum uh, lowest aerodynamic efficiency can be achieved. In the rear, you can see that we've kept this pure design form and you don't see any visible rear wiper. So where the rear wiper has actually been put is way up underneath here in the rear spoiler so that it reduces the coefficient and drag as much as possible. On the inside, you can see compared to the IX35 fuel cell, there used to be a large bump here where the tanks used to sit. Now they've implemented three tanks instead of two. And since they're a smaller size, they've implemented a full flat floor, which allows 461 liters with the seats up. And once you put those seats down, you have 840 liters VDA. Where those tanks are exactly are right here along the side. There's one tank here behind the rear wheel. And then there's two more underneath the rear bench. In terms of where the battery sits, it's also directly here behind. So you have a 40 kilowatt battery, which also has 1.56 kilowatt hours. And the best way to think about the battery is, is this works rather like a hybrid. So when you're taking off, when you're driving in the streets, the battery's helping the car move along. Most of the car is powered by the fuel cell stack. The fuel cell stack itself is 95 kilowatts, which makes a total of 135 kilowatts. The motor that powers the wheels is able to handle 120. So typically you would think, okay, that's 15 extra. Where does that go? That 15 extra is for the headlights, for the rear tail lights, for all the systems on the inside, and then also gives a bit of a bandwidth for when you do cold starts. Here on the interior of the Nexo, you see we've implemented a seven inch LCD uh, cluster. So this is where it shows all of your speed information, your fuel consumption, and so on. And for navigation, we've implemented a 12.3 inch navigation screen. So this also acts as where our radio is housed, where air conditioning units information about the fuel cell stack and how the consumption is performing is all housed in there. In terms of the center console, we've implemented the shift by wire, which we already have in the Ionic EV. But you can see that it's opened up a space here, so where you have wireless charging and USB ports, or just storage for a purse, perhaps. Also, on the interior, um, we have what we can show as blind view monitor. So the system is a camera that's implemented into the rear view mirror. Every time you turn, you can see what the rear view mirror sees. This is combined together with blind spot detection, so you have two systems which are constantly protecting you when you switch lanes on the highway. Speaking of driving on the highway, this car has lane following assist, which is an advanced form of lane keeping assist. Lane keeping assist watches only one lane while you're driving on the highway, which constantly is correcting while you're driving. Lane following assist watches both lanes on the highway, well, which keeps the exact center of the road at all times. And this starts from zero kilometers per hour up to the top speed of the vehicle at 179 kilometers per hour. Overall, there's also remote parking assist. So when you find a parking spot and perhaps it's too small to get out of the vehicle, you drive past the spot, turn on the remote parking assist, simply step out of the vehicle, press the button on the key, and the car can park itself either a 90 degree parking spot or parallel parking. The Hyundai Nexus is at the moment, I would say more technology package than a day-to-day -day car. But very important is you can drive the car daily and the grid of power supplies for hydrogen cars is growing daily. Very important is the Nexo is not only emission-free, it also reduces the amount of fine dust pollution that two diesel cars would put in the air while driving the same distance. And what I really like with the car is the design of the car really is a bit futuristic, but it will still fit already today in our traffic.